Everybody who comes to the Paradise Warrior Retreat gets a Certificate of Achievement. And right now, Rob Kamen is signing the Certificates of Achievement. And if you don't know who this guy is, he is Mr. Low Leg. Low Kick. Yeah, Mr. Low, Low Kick. Um, a Dutch fighter, right? You, yes. you come from, from uh -huh. there. Netherlands. Holland. But you fought Amsterdam. around the world. Pretty much everywhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you've come here to the Paradise Retreat this weekend. What brings you here? Uh, Joram is a good friend of mine, and I love to share my knowledge with mm -hmm. yeah, as many people as I can. Right. And uh, yeah, especially now with the MMA being so popular, uh, I can add a lot to the stand-up game because okay. I think there's still a lot to learn for a lot of fighters in the stand-up game. Right. Uh, the effectiveness of uh, a lot of kicks and punches right. in the MMA. Well, you came from Salat and then went into like a more traditional uh, Thai boxing background, right? I went for what? Sorry, wasn't it uh, Salat? Yeah, Pinchak yeah. Silat, yeah. And then, then I uh, started Thai boxing, kickboxing uh, at Majiro Gym in Holland mm -hmm. with the famous uh, Jan Plas and Lucien Carbine. Right. And, and how uh, have you now adjusted that for the way uh, a, an MMA guy would stand or kick or? I think it was already there because our Dutch, the Dutch kickboxing style uh, really relates to MMA. Yeah, they we focus more sit, on Yeah, it. we sit a little bit more in our stance. Mm -hmm. uh, our footwork is way more different than Thai, Thai yeah, boxing. Yeah, more lateral. Yeah, lateral and uh, yeah, to the side mm -hmm. to have a better impact for our kicks. Uh, and it really suits for, for MMA, so I think, yeah, I have to bring a lot of Dutch uh, trainers over here. And, uh, Two of the current uh, MMA guys that you have right now is Jason Mayhem Miller, right? Uh, yeah, I trained him. Uh, I just trained Rashad Evans a little bit with okay. another partner, uh, Harry Hoft. He's mm -hmm. a Dutch trainer. Uh, was my sparring partner for years. Uh, he trains out there. Brandon Vera is one of my yeah. Yeah. Things he's want to work again with me, so we need to talk. Uh, because he's fighting Shogun. Mm -hmm. That's so, going to be a so. great fight. So he needs me. Yeah, the styles make fights. So how, how uh, would the approach for, for that fight go? I can't tell you. <laughs> of course you can't. <laughs> I, sometimes uh, I ask, yeah, just okay. for being hopeful. Okay. You think he's tired <laughs> so I can get away with right, it. Right, right, right. <laughs> you might fall for it. <laughs> now, you make the adjustment from being a championship fighter yeah. to being a teacher. Yeah. What's the adjustment? To put your ego aside. Right, how do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, I, I did a lot of uh, healing seminars at the same time because uh, I got herni I got I had a herniated disc, right. and that related to yeah to the ego and to past traumas from childhood. Okay. So I got into healing through a friend of mine, uh, Roy Martino, mm -hmm. and I met Dr. Peter here in the U.S. Right. So and that I comb combined those two things and. Uh, yeah, when you when you're a fighter, you're a taker. Mm -hmm. You're an animal. Yeah. You just take and want to destroy and kill. Uh, roughly said. And as a trainer, you have to learn to give. Yeah. So in a way, that's being more loving. Right. That's your uh, exchange. So yeah, but it, it, that takes a while. Not every fighter can go there. Some get there easily. Some get there more difficult. But yeah, it's hard to let uh, for a man to let go of that ego. We are in a very ego world mm -hmm. if you look at everything especially here in the states ego and drama are the two things that they cultivate right so yeah i love it now it's, it's a, a way uh, i'm a different person so right right you know, it changed a lot in my life uh, conceptually that's really interesting because to be a good martial artist Maybe I mean, good fighter, martial artist. You have to be egotistical enough to get in the ring with somebody and think I can beat you, but you have to be humble enough to get beat up by your training partners. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's a, a give and take, it's yeah. exchange. So that's the love. Right. <laughs> and then uh, I compare that martial artist is more kind and loving, is self defense. Right. The moment you do competition, the ego comes there, and it's about uh, winning. Right. And that takes away from love. Right. It's simple. It's well, simple. how do you balance the two? That's that's the hard. Yeah, that's where I had the, the 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 big transformation because I was so extreme focused on that. I think I was the most complete fighter that uh, like systematically chopped my opponents down. Yeah. Like yeah, very yeah. systematically, I came in the ring with a game plan. Right. And that's 
that needs yeah some brains it mm -hmm. needs a, a, a strategy right and you come in there and you and you analyze your opponents and you you you, you, you study them mm -hmm. and that yeah, is almost like a what do you call colonel uh, or somebody in the army you understand yeah that, it's uh, making a, a strategy yes, yeah and, and that's what you don't see so much anymore right you, you don't you mean you don't see it anymore no, no, that no, guys no, aren't no. aren't strategic no. No, not enough. Not enough. Not enough, especially not in MMA. Especially not in MMA. Yeah. Wow. Because so who would you say are some of the the best you know, strategic strikers? Yeah. Anderson Silva. For me, George and Pierre, BJ Penn. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a lot. If I would be able to put them in one group, you understand? I would teach the group. They will be elevating. Yeah. Like a third or maybe more percent instead of their like a third, 30% like of right. their cap capability. Because the, f the effectiveness of certain things in Thai boxing and things are still not really uh, used properly. Instead. Why, do you think that uh, people don't know how to adjust it for MMA? Is that the big issue? I think timing and footwork okay. are the two components that put those things together. Okay. Because there can be, uh, the timing is still not 100% and footwork. It's, it's, I showed it today. It's like a simple step to the side, like diagonal for leg kick, mm -hmm. is a thousand percent impact. Yeah, you difference. get much more leverage on and chopping. You the still see the people stepping straight at their opponent and give, and give a the famous butt kick, I call it. it is, <laughs> yeah, it is a butt kick. You know, yeah. so it, it has totally no effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get some bru bruises and thing, and, right. and you hear uh, the announcers say, "Wow, this devastating leg kick!" But <laughs> I know better. <laughs> you understand? So Absolutely. the only Brandon was the only one who really executed some really devastating, perfect leg kicks yeah. in the beginning. Yeah, from angling out, yeah, angling really out to the side. Yeah. If if you could if you could change anything about MMA right now, what would you change? I would add, I would have changed things, okay. I would add things. Yeah, footwork, timing, the impact of, of some elbows, uh, leg kicks, knees, and uh, the, the, the clinch, mm -hmm. the, and the You've interruption of shooting involved, if, if go people ahead. shoot. You've been involved with MMA, well, with martial arts for what, how many years now? 30 years. Yeah, 30 years. So you've that seen... That old? <laughs> you've seen the evolution of this sport, yeah, right? Yeah. Where do you see it going? Oh, it's it's growing, growing, growing. But you see that the really outstanding guys that mm -hmm. put everything together, and uh, that's 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 beautiful to watch. <laughs> but there's still so many that really don't have a clue what they do. <laughs> Not really. You understand? Right. To to see it from my point of view, because uh, they have the, a little uh, wrestling background or a little keeper, and they think after five fights they're the man. Yeah. And sorry to say, but man, yeah. I did 128 fights and I'm still learning. Instead, well, like I'm still don't think, hey, <laughs> yeah, I might be considered the best stand-up fighter, yeah, com with some other people in the world. But man, I'm still growing. Every seminar, people make me better. And it was funny because it, the theme for everybody that I've interviewed so far has been about sharing and giving and mm. kindness mm. and learning from each other yeah. you know um who do you go to 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 kind of step yourself up as you're still growing and still learning 30 years in, in the sport my students <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah because they give you the best feedback, uh, feedback. feedback. yeah because most of the champions it, when they're confronted with another trainer or champion uh -huh. the ego starts to talk again you understand so i learned the most from my students mm -hmm. or, or the people that I give seminars to. Okay. Because they're honest. They're like like little kids. Right. But they, and you, yeah, they give best feedback. When you get somebody, when yeah. you get a student, how do you know how to teach them? You know, because some people are auditory learners, some people are visual learners, some people are kinesthetic, you know. Yeah, that's like making a rapport with the person and, and uh, adapting. It, I think that's one of my biggest qualities to, to deal with, with little children or uh -huh. to with old people or fast people. I, in one, in a couple of minutes, I see 
like I, I do warm me up and I see the level of the whole group and mm -hmm. I see who's really outstanding I see yeah yeah and I think yeah that's a gift that I have and it's the same thing with analyzing an opponent mm -hmm. and I think uh, that's where I will be in the future as a, as a game planner or uh, like analyzing somebody's uh, and yeah airtime from my friends Sean and Sean launch this week is going to be one of my biggest tools in that okay because Great. you can communicate you can share uh, footage uh -huh. so. well where, where can people find you uh, robcayman.com okay and it's going to be a whole new updated thing well it was an absolute pleasure to talk with you and to learn from you and we'll be in touch i go back <laughs> thanks